Hello everybody, in this episode of Programming and Algorithms we're going to look at how Python implements both linked lists and recursion or recursive programs. So we start off and look at linked lists. So we'll remember that a linked list is a, a series of nodes. Each node is made up of a value and a pointer and each node points to a successive node and the last node in the list points to a null value. The top of the list is indicated by a pointer called head that points to the first element of the linked list, or the start of the list. How do we declare a linked list node in Python? We say class list node def underscore init underscore self value and pointer self dot value gets value self dot pointer gets pointer. Um, going to ask you to trust me on this, okay? I, I I don't really want to go into an explanation as to what all of this means. You'll see it in, in when you move on to object or into programming, but for the moment we're just going to say this is how we declare a node for a linked list in Python. So if we want to declare a linked list of nodes, we declare them in reverse order, and we'll see why in a second. So in, in our linked list, node 4 is of list node type, and it has a value 31 and points to none. In o -N -E, big N is the Python version of null in ULL. So none is, is what node 4 points to. Now node 3 is a list node as well. It has a value 37, and it points to node 4. We can see why we had to declare node 4 first now, because we can't declare node 4. We can't declare node 3 without having already declared node 4 because node 3 points to node 4. Similarly node 2 points to node 3 and node 1 points to node 2. So we have to declare them in reverse order even though if we wanted to print them out or something like that we could print them out in the correct order. Just the values though not the pointers. So we can print out the values of each of the nodes as node 1234, we could pr print them out as 4321, whatever order we wish. If we want to print it out a bit fancier, we could print it out by putting the values in square brackets and have pointer, little pointer symbols between them and having the last value pointing to null. So here we go. 23 points to 62, which points to 37, which points to 31, which points to null. Now I know I said that in Python, the null is represented as none in ONE, but the user doesn't need to know that. So every printout we produce, we can just print out the word null if that's what they're expecting. So let's look at printing out the values one at a time using a loop. So um, our head pointer, we'll call it head node. It's a global value that all these methods can access. So we say it's global, and then we create our local current that points to head node. If current is not null or none in this case, then we keep looping around, keep going until we reach the end of the list, print out the current value, and then move the move to the next node by saying current gets current up pointer. When we've traversed the list and gotten to the last node, the last node points to null or none. So we need to print out the value of the last node as well. So as you can see, there's one more print outside of the loop, which is print current dot value, and that'll be the last element of the list. We didn't see that in the pseudo code, but in in Python we have to make we 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 do that because th that's the difference between the design and the development. And then if the list is empty, we just print out an empty list. So what will we get? We'll get each element printed on a separate line. If we wanted to add a count in as well, we could uh, create a variable called count nodes, increment that variable inside the loop, and print out one more value outside the loop to, to account for the last value, which points to null. And what would we get? We'd get each of the values printed out, and then count is four. How do we create an empty list? We just say head node gets none. How do we delete a list? We assign head node to be none, same way again, and that'll, if the head node is pointing to nothing, then the list is empty. How do we check if a list is empty? 
we return if head node is equal to none. If it is equal to none, then the list is empty. If it's not equal to none, then there are values in the list. How do we find a node within a linked list in Python? So this code is on two pages. First we say we're using head node, and we say current points to head node. Then we have our loop, and our loop has two conditions. As long as we haven't reached the end of the list, or we haven't found the value we're looking for, do keep moving through the list by saying current gets current dot pointer. When we've reached the when we've reached exited out of the loop, one of two things has happened. Either we've reached the end of the list or we've reached the value we're looking for. If we reach the end of the list then current dot pointer will be none. So we print out this value n is not in the list. Otherwise we say we've found the value and the loop exited when we found the value and we can print out that value if we like. How do we insert a node at a particular position into the list? Well, this is over two pages as well. We say our head node is global again. Current gets the value of head node. We create our new node that we're inserting in. We'll call it node X, and it's of type list node, and it has the value in that it got passed in as a parameter, and we'll, for the moment, at a point to none. We have our position counter that's one, and our count of nodes that's zero. So if the position passed in as a parameter is zero, that means the user wants the new node, node x, to be the head node of the list. So that means we make head node the global variable point to node x now, and node x's pointer points to whatever current is pointing to, which is the old head node of the list. If the position isn't zero, then we keep looping around in the position count front, we find the position we need to be in, and then we keep tra traversing the list by saying current gets current dot pointer. We're also incrementing a counter, but when we've got to the position we're in, we'll exit that loop, and then we say the new node points to whatever current is pointing to, and now current is pointing to node x. So that's inserting a node exactly as we saw in pseudocode. How do we delete a node? Well, we know for deleting we have two pointers, previous and current. For At the start, previous is none, and current is the head node. Then if we've found the value already, if the value we want to delete is the head of the list, then we just say head node gets to whatever current is pointing to. Otherwise, what we do is loop around and keep looping either until we get to the end of the list and the node isn't in the list or we exit the list the loop when current of value is n inside the loop what we say is previous gets value of current and current gets value of current on pointer so both pointers move across the list when we've exited the loop to delete the value all we need to do is say whatever previous Whatever current is pointing to at the moment, now previous is pointing to. So that means the value in current has now been skipped. And now it will go from previous to the next value after current. And that's deleting a node in the linked list in Python. Now let's move on and look at recursive programming or recursion in Python. So we'll recall that the factorial program we can define factorial, the mathematical function rather, n factorial as being n by n minus 1 factorial. So our factorial program, here's the, the core factorial bit. We define our module or method. It's called recursive fact. It takes in a value n. If n is 0, then we return 1, else we return n multiplied by recursive fact n minus 1. And we saw in the pseudocode how that works. It'll, if the number is 5, it'll go 5 by recursive fact 4. 4 recursive fact 4 will work out as 4 multiplied by recursive fact 3. Recursive fact 3 will be 3 multiplied by recursive fact 2. Recursive fact 2 will be 2 multiplied by recursive fact 1. 1 recursive fact 1 will be 1 multiplied by recursive fact 0. And recursive fact 0 will be 1. So it'll work out. And the main program that calls that could be something like get the number and then print recursive fact, the value input. Fibonacci in 
Python looks like the pseudo code. Recursive fib, if it's one or two, just return one, else return the recursive fib of n minus one plus n minus recursive fib n minus two. And we call it exactly like the factorial program. We saw how to convert to binary by um, deleting, d dividing recur repeatedly into a value and looking at the remainders. And the code is very much like the pseudo code. We define a module. It's decimal to binary. It takes in a value n. If n is less than zero, we say it must be a positive integer. Else, if it's zero, then we return the string zero. Else, we return the decimal to bind of n integer division by two added to the string of uh, division remainder of two. And that'll give us our binary string. And our main program is just enter a decimal number, the number, whatever is, whatever its binary value is. Now we'll look at manipulating linked lists using recursive programming or recursion. Um, if we want to count the values we saw before, the key thing is our recursive count is we return one plus the recursive count of current dot pointer. So the current, we take in current and then we pass in current dot pointer. So we're moving through the list and adding one on each time. So the code looks like this. We declare a module or method called recursive count. If the list is blank, then we return zero, else we return one plus recursive count, but not passing in the, the, the current value, but pointing in, put, passing in current dot pointer. Keep doing that until we've got to the end of the list where our final value will be zero. How do we print out all the nodes in the list? Well, the key part again is that we have a recursive print. It takes in current. We print out each value and then rec recursively print current dot pointer. So this is the full thing. If it's, if we've reached the end of the list, just return nothing else. Keep printing out the values and, and keep calling recursive print with the next value in the, the next node in the list. How do we find a node? Well, our method is called find a node. It takes in the current pointer and the value we're looking for and we return the next value in the list. So the, it's simple enough. If we've reached the end of the list, then we return nothing else. If we found the value, we say we found it else. We keep returning find a node current up pointer. How do we insert a value recursively? It's insert a node, three parameters, the current pointer, the position we want to put it in, and the value n we want to put it in. We know we need to declare a new node, node x in this case, and it's a list node n and null. No, node x will point to whatever current is pointing to, and current pointer will be pointing to n then. And then we do this recursively by returning insert a node again, but not with current, with current dot pointer. So we keep looping around. If we've reached the end of the list, we return null, else we keep, if the current value is the position we're looking for, then we insert, as we saw before, else we keep returning, insert a node with current dot pointer. That'll get us to where we're going. Deleting our current pointer and the value n, and we just say current dot pointer is assigned, delete a node, current dot pointer, comma n. So here's the full code. If it's null, if it's not null the list, then if the current value is n, we just Delete it by saying whatever current is now pointing to current dot pointer. Otherwise, we say current dot pointer is assigned delete a node recursively called for with current dot pointer and n. And that's deleting a node using recursion. Thanks very much. That's the end of the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you go and implement some of this stuff in Python to see it working.